there. So um, my name is Trevor Nimigers. I think I know uh, uh, most of you on the call um, today, and I'm joined with a number of my team members. And uh, again, really thrilled that you guys could join us. Um, the whole initiative around um, the pandemic, um, the, not, uh, this global uh, challenge that everyone's facing has caused all of us to, to really reflect and sit back and go, what do we need to do? What do we need to do in our, um, in our world in terms of helping out, um, providing a, a helping hand, supporting our customers, supporting our employees and, and uh, um, you know, the people in our community. So we did that exact same thing. We thought very carefully about um, what we could do. And naturally with iTrack, um, as a really powerful platform, we saw lots of different um, alternatives of, of what that could look like. So what we're going to walk you through today is just a few of those different alternatives. Um, show you some things that you can load into your eye track environment right away if you want, um, but also get some feedback from you in terms of what, uh, what things you might be seeing in the industry that we need to take care of. So let's get started. So for, what do we want to accomplish today? Um, really what we want to accomplish is just show you the process flows um, that we've been extending in iTrack relative to COVID-19, get some feedback from you on it. We're going we're gonna to view, um, show you, uh, have a conversation with Michelle, who is our QHSE specialist and, and certified safety professional. She's going to give us a bit of feedback of what she's seen. We're going to show you the process flows that we have. We're going to do a little bit of demonstration, and then we're just going to open it up for some feedback, and certainly we'll follow up with you after the meeting if you've got other things that you'd like to share with us. So that's what we're going to accomplish today. So um, when we looked at the problem, um, we started to see a whole bunch of different things that could be done. And I guess the, the primary thing is we saw that organizations were a very important line of defense uh, defense for, you know, stopping the spread of COVID-19. We saw organizations that have people working at home and they need to operate differently. They need to keep safety at the primary, you know, uh, at the front of their, their mindset all day long. But there's also people who have to continue to work and continue to operate in plants and, and you know, field operations and certainly our healthcare workers, which are just doing a phenomenal job. So we wanted to give organizations and HSE professionals um, tools that they could use to be able to help record, track, and manage these, um, you know, the different responses that they needed to have to the COVID-19 environments and, you know, assess where risk exists, assess where they have to follow certain new compliance that's been put in, pro in, in place very quickly. And all we got to do is go to our local grocery short stores to see how processes have changed so radically in such a short amount of time. So we, we looked at it from these objectives. I think we've kind of nailed the, you know, the most of them, but there's probably others. You know, it's about providing employees a standardized process uh, for reporting, um, giving employees tools to help keep safety and wellness at the top of their mind. Um, provide employees with the centralized employers, pardon me, with centralized visibility across their organization, and then start to use this culmination of data um, to identify areas of risk, um, you know. And then the last one, which is really also, as you know, with iTrack, is when one organization does a form or, you know, builds a, a, a process flow, as we call them, Others can use it as well. And we want to share those best practices as much as we can. So it's also about building best practices to be able to support each other. So that's that's part of what we want to cover. So what what is this um, evolve? One of the things we love about iTrack is you can build things quickly. You get it out on your mobile app. You can change it. You can adapt it. You get your portal. All of that environment is meant to be changed and configured very quickly. So when we put this tool, um, Darren, I'm guessing we when we, we probably started on this like 10 days ago. So this has not been a long process and we've got 15 different process flows um, inside this suite already available for people to use. Some being somewhat familiar, others being brand new and very COVID specific, but the bulk of this has been built in the last uh, the last little while to show um, how the platform can support you and other organizations. 
Um, we look at these different processes in three different ways. We're looking at them from a perspective of the company. We're looking at them from the perspective of the home worker. Um, some, you know, people who are obviously working at home and then field workers who still need to be at work, but they have to operate differently. So we'll, Darren will talk through some of that. These forms that you see today, these are things that you guys can download into your environment. You can talk to your, your consultants in terms of getting access to this, um, that we're not charging for the suite of software. Um, you know, you can, you can, the forms and what we built, um, you can take them and use them as they are. And then there's simple workflows, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the Power Dashboard, Power BI Dashboard. And this is version one. Recognize that we're moving quickly here. We're going to adapt with more feedback. We expect that we'll version it ongoingly. And we we even see some new some uh, new ways that we might bring this to others in the market as well. And we're currently in conversations with Microsoft about that. So um, we see a bit of a screenshot here in the bottom right. You see a workflow at the top right where we talk about the workflow capabilities of iTrack, information coming in from a mobile device, coming in from the portal, getting reviewed and assessed, and starting to you know uh, evaluate this information, assign actions, all those actions centrally stored, and then obviously closing off um, you know on the particular uh, process flow um, that you have underway. So what I wanted to do just to start the conversation, we'd love this to be interactive. So if you guys have questions, please put them in the chat window. Um, it's a, we've got uh, lots of people on the call, which is certainly what we were hoping to do. Um, but it, because that it might be a little hard to have a round table, but you know, put something in the chat window. If we don't get to you directly, we'll certainly come back um, you know, and get some of the conversations going through email and through our regular consultant channels. But the first person I, I wanted to, to introduce, and I think everybody knows Michelle, um, or, or at some point has got engaged uh, with Michelle on our team. She really, she's not a technical person. You guys know lots of my team members, we're technical. We go into the, the, the nuts and bolts of how iTrack works and we work hard at that every day. Michelle, we brought her on the team so that she could really help orient us to the strategy that we needed to have from a pure health and safety perspective. So I wanted to turn it to Michelle for a few minutes just to say, Michelle, what are you seeing? What are you seeing with the consult, you know, the companies that you're working with? What are you seeing broader in the industry? What are you seeing out there that that COVID is changing in our, our daily environments as health and safety people? And maybe some of the commentary on where we may be able to help. And then from there, we're going to turn it over to Darren and he's going to walk us through walk us through some of the, the processes and technology. So Michelle, you there? Hi everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I guess in this COVID crisis, I don't really know if we thought it was going to get as serious as fast as it did. So I think all of us can say that we're trying to do the best we can in basically a state of an emergency. So there's lots uh, of people that are under high stress. I know as a safety person, there's been a lot of items that um, people needed right away. So one main thing is that, you know, it's rapid deployment. So with that rapid deployment, a lot of times the blue collar workers or the, the guys out in the field, they're not liking a change. Um, there's also been some challenges where some clients have never asked for medical information before. And now we're asking them to fill out a self-assessment to make sure that they're cleared to go to work, to make sure that as a company or, a, or an oil field project that we're doing our due diligence to make sure that we're not contributing to the spread of COVID on a workplace. So there has been some challenges to towards that where people don't want to actually provide medical information. So I think it's a lot about the messaging and showing the leadership um, showing them that we care about them as people and we want them to be able to work all while trying to mitigate the risk of the pandemic. So obviously, if you're a non-essential worker, most of those workers are working from home or not working at all. But it's the essential workers who are out in the field that they're at risk because they are going outside, they're interacting with others as well as um, they could be asymptomatic, asymptomatic carrying it around. So that's the, the it, there's so many things that are unknown at this time. 
Um, so with that, um, we I always like to go to our risk matrix. Do we want to advance the slide? So this is what we've been, I've been working on from a risk matrix. So if any of you safety professionals have any opinions on this, this would be great. Um, so what we're kind of looking at is from a risk matrix, we always want to try and mitigate the risk and go as reasonably as practical. Now from a, a health safety standpoint, the risk might not actually be that high, but our risk to our, our business is high at this time. So that's something to kind of consider as well from, you know, managing it. How are you making decisions on on what we're doing and how are we communicating to our workers about why they're still going to work or how we're going to mitigate the risk and some of the controls? Uh, Darren, you can probably go to the next slide, too. There should be one more. Oh, no, that's good. Okay, I think other than that, do you guys have any questions on from that side? Is there anything I missed, Darren or Trevor? No, no I think that's a, gr a great place to start. We just, we wanted, you know, um, you know, Michelle to be here to to kind of help us understand some of what, what she's seen in the field. Let's jump right into the processes and hand it over to Darren and then uh, uh, Michelle and Darren will kind of uh, tell us some of the thinking that went into some of the suite that you'll see. So, uh, I'll be the slide person. I'll run the slides. You guys just tell me when to advance. Cool. Thanks, Trevor. Um, so like Trevor said, we came up with the um, 15 process flows that, you know, um, from our experience, we thought, you know, could help out, um, you know, our customers and other organizations with this, this pandemic. Um, and again, it was it was interesting, you know, even our journey in the last, you know, short 10 days, um, you know, as we were putting things together, you know, the environment was constantly changing. So we were constantly changing these uh, these process flows that we were building out here um, in our in our COVID environment. But um, like Trevor said, we kind of focused on, um, you know, um, a, a few different aspects of this um, one being, you know, from the company aspect. Uh, to being from the field worker or, you know, who, you know, the folks that have to go to work, the essential workers, their aspect, um, the remote workers, which we'll call the um, at-home workers. And then there's, um, you know, um, some other things that, um, you know, a lot of you have and, and you'll be familiar with. Um, but then we've tweaked, you know, the instant reporting process to be a little more COVID specific. Uh, you know, Michelle showed the, uh, the COVID risk. Um, <clears throat> she also produced uh, um, a risk matrix as, as per, you know, impact to productivity and company output too. So, you know, you can, you can choose multiple risk matrices now within um, the instant and business impact forms to, to help with that. So in terms of um, process flows, um, you know, again, th this is what we came up with, um, you know, also hearing from a few in the industry and um, from this meeting, you know, we, we do want feedback. Um, as you know, are these valuable? And and if so, you know, do they look good? Are there any you know uh, changes that we should do to them? Um, like Trevor said, it is version one. So, um, so one of the first ones was the business continuity plan. Uh, so that was really focused around you know HSC slash management, um, and it's something that we thought you should do monthly. And what it is is a standardized che checklist that really says you know have you considered all these different impacts to your to your business. Um, and once you consider these impacts, right, how are you going to implement actions um, in your organization, right, that helps with, um, you know, these these impacts from the uh, either a pandemic or epidemic, right? So right now we're in a pandemic, but um, this suit well, you know, going forward, if let's say you had a, you know, in years forward, you, uh, you know, influenza epidemic, for example, right? Um, operational impact assessment. This is this is a work in process. Um, you know, this one I'll show. We weren't sure exactly how this could fit. I think it's valuable, but again, with um, the incident reporting process, we weren't too sure. But this is really saying, you know, if someone or a group of people get sick at work, you know, either from COVID or something else like the flu, you know, what's the impact to um, to your operations in that area, right? Can you still maintain operations? Can't you? You know, do you need support from other? Um, parts of the organization. Uh, so that's the purpose of that form. Um, cleaning checklist, right, is just, you know, a checklist to go through saying, hey, you know, when you're going through all these different areas, high travel areas, um, you know, washrooms, things like that, you know, have you been 
um, cleaning and sterilizing these things, right? So checking that stuff off. Um, Disinfective practices audits is really about, uh, you know, if, if someone says, hey, I've got these chemicals and I'm going to use them, I'm going to apply them in this way, right? Are you ensuring that you're getting the right um, uh, review and approval of the application of these, these different chemicals, um, you know, for disinfecting um, COVID um, surfaces? Uh, Pre-work assessment and monitoring, this one's uh, a really important one. So this is geared towards field workers. Um, so the, the reason for this form is if, um, if you're going into work, um, you need to fill one of these things out and it's really a, an assessment saying, can you go into work, right? And, and gets you to think about that kind of stuff. Um, and same thing, if you're going into work, you know, maintain a daily interaction log. So this is, you know, um, who you've interacted with physically during the day, whether it be you know, employees, uh, you know, other people, third parties, and the areas, um, you know, at the workplace you visited, so that, you know, if you do fall sick, then, you know, we can we can trace back, um, you know, um, your interactions. Next slide, please. Um, so now focusing more on the, uh, the home worker and then just some more generic forms, um, daily check-in, and what this is, is, you know, you've got, uh, especially if you've got large work workforce, you don't necessarily know where people are or, you know, if they're doing okay. So that's the reason for this form is every day people can check in saying, yeah, I'm working from home or no, I'm actually sick and I'm self-isolating or whatever, whatever it is they're doing. And, you know, are they doing okay? So, you know, do they need support? Have they been talking with other people? Um, so you can start to maybe identify, you know, not only people who are getting sick, but uh, people who might need some uh, so support either, um, you know, through, um, you know, physical means like they need, um, you know, materials or whatnot to, you know, if they have mental health um, support needs. Uh, weekly personal inspection. Um, what this is, is, you know, if you're working from home or another remote location, um, it's an inspection to make sure that your, your workspace is adequate and gets, you know, these remote workers thinking about that kind of stuff. Um, then we've got the alternate work location request and travel request. So those things are, you know, if you want, if you're working at the office, and you want to work from home, you can request that. Or if you need to work from some other place, you can request that. And then if you need to travel for company reasons, right? Obviously, you know, um, other than critical needs, no one really gets to travel anymore, but there's a, an approval process for that. Um, and then we get into the stuff that, um, you know, most of the folks online here will, will be familiar with. So you know, daily safety meetings, right? Um, so you all, you all probably use the safety meeting control at some point, but um, this one's a little different. It also has the uh, emergency response section. So, you know, as you go through your daily safety meeting, you're also thinking about, um, you know, ERP stuff. Uh, incident report. So again, um, this one is the standard incident report you all have, but um, it's got a twist now where we specifically deal with, um, you know, COVID-19 or, you know, any other type of, um, uh, you know, um, infection, an infectious uh, substance. Um, quick action, you know, just a way for workers to quickly support, uh, submit an action. And support request is, you know, again, if, if workers are working through iTrack, instead of having to open up email and all that, they can just open up their support request form and, you know, send something in asking for, you know, any, any technical things, bugs, whatever changes they want to see to forms, feedback, um, whatever, whatever they want. Next slide. So here's just uh, some screen caps of, you know, the forms. And what I did was I highlighted the ones that actually have classifications. So as you can see, the cleaning checklist um, has classifications. So if you have any of those areas, uh, you just check off the areas that you have. And then obviously it's going to um, provide you with the inspections um, for the cleaning of those areas. For the uh, pre-work assessment and monitoring, so you can see um, here, you know, before you go into work, you say cleared for work, um, you know, meaning you're you're okay to go in. Um, you know, if your process is is secondary medical screening on site, then then that's what it is. Um, or you know, if if you're presumed or you've been exposed or you're actually confirmed or recovered, you know, you answer these things and it it walks you through uh, an assessment within the. Um, within the form to really say, yes, you're allowed to come into work or no, you you know, this is what you should do, whether, you know, self-isolate or seek medical attention. And then uh, the daily check-in for um, 
the home workers, right? Um, you know, again, um, you know, are you cleared for work? Um, so have you completed a, a, a self-assessment? Um, you know, is there any secondary screening you, you need to do? Um, are you isolating because you've been diagnosed or, or you have kind of symptoms of COVID? Um, you know, are you working from home um, or are you, are you in quarantine? Um, and then again, this form does have um, questions saying, you know, do you need support? And, you know, have you been talking with other individuals? And just to just to keep that um, um, support structure in place. So here's some screen caps of what these things look like. And then I'll also go into the uh, the system and, and demo a few of these too, um, just to show you them live. Um, but this is the, uh, oops, sorry, Trevor, um, business continuity plan. Um, so we talked about, you know, the, the checklist on the impact and the actions of the business. Uh, next screen. Uh, the pre-work assessment and monitoring. So, you know, there's the um, um, scored list, right? Um, that, you know, calculates a result based on, you know, how you answer the self-assessment and then we'll open up um, different sections, let you know, you know, what you have to do or if you have to fill out um, uh, further information. Next slide, please. The daily interaction log, right? So this is again for, for the tracing aspect. So every day when I go into work, right, I enter it, I say, you know, um, who I physically interact with, the employees, um, other contacts, and, you know, areas of the uh, facility or facilities I've, I've been in. So if I do fall ill, then, you know, and I'll show you this with Empower BI, how you can kind of trace back um, you know, who you all have to contact and, uh, you know, maybe get them to self-isolate and tested. And the daily check-in, right? So um, there's there's more to this forum, but, you know, it's it's just checking in. Um, and then, you know, there's al also um, instructions about what things mean, right? So if you've been told to, you know, quarantine or self-isolate yourself, um, what it means if, you know, you keep on hearing in the news what's physical or social distancing. Well, here's what that means. Here's good hygiene. Here's, you know, so you can show these instructions and, um, you know, it just helps reinforce, um, you know, what uh, what this all means here to to the regular worker. And then I'll jump into the uh, the Power BI here in a minute. I'll show you actually some of the stuff live. But um, before I do that, let me just jump into the portal here. I'll take over, Trevor and present my screen and then we'll come back to the the powerpoint and um, the power bi okay so here's our um, i track 365 uh, cove environment um, and this is where, you know, if you want access to any of these forms, right, we would um, contact your consultant and then, um, you know, we would work with you to, to get these into your environment. So this is how we have them broken down. Um, you know, some of these are mobile enabled, some of them are not, um, but we thought, you know, it'd be easiest for um, most of the users of the system to look at these things from, you know, a company perspective, you know, the essential or mobile workers perspective, and then the, uh, the regular employees, right? So under the, the company, uh, perspective, we got that um, business continuity plan. So open up one of those. And this is something, you know, you probably fill out monthly or, or maybe only once, uh, whatever your frequency is. But it's really, um, <clears throat> you know, fill in some general information and you'll see the kind of same theme among, amongst most of these forms, you know, who's entering it, um, the area or, or uh, facility or location you're dealing with here. Um, you know, if, if we do need to notify uh, through simple workflow, you know, a supervisor or manager that um, there's something there that they need to review, uh, we may ask for that information too. And then it's just this, uh, this checklist here. So, you know, impact to the business, right? So have you done this? Have you done this? Um, have you thought about this, right? So done in progress, not started in a, uh, you know, more impacts. Um, some actions you can you can implement like you know implement back to work policy you know establish HR policies um, you know formally communicate things right so 
you know, this is a good checklist to say, oh yeah, you know, I haven't thought about that. You know, yeah, I've done that one. This one I haven't started, but I should start it. And, um, you know, just like any other iTrack, um, you know, inspection, you can add findings, actions, whatever to, to any one of these here, uh, if you want, right? So this one's not started. So maybe I want to add an action for myself to remind me to, you know, develop these uh, working policies. Um, this operational impact assessment, I just want to quickly show this. This is the one that, you know, I think it's kind of a neat form. Um, I'm just not sure how it can fit in, you know, with the instant reporting process that, that we do, but it's pretty simple, right? It's, it's, uh, it's saying if, if, if we do have an illness at work uh, with regards to, you know, COVID or something like that, um, you know, how many employees do you have in your the department or region that's infected? Um, how many are now sick or unable um, to do their work? And how many are required to leave work, right? So kind of the numbers of how many you had and how many you have now. And then just a quick uh, status assessment of the location. So it's really simple. You know, are you able to uh, maintain your your critical services and all that? You know, or yes or no? Um, are you able to maintain for the next week? Um, you know, do you are you receiving support? Um, yes, no. Um, you know, are you um, receiving other you know support from your customers outside parties? Yes, no. So, just really quick, right? So this kind of gives you an indication of you know at a department or area level. You know, are people falling ill? and what's the impact to you know the functions of that that area right are they able to to can you continue on or or not um, but again you know some of this information might also fit into your instant reporting process because if someone falls ill with COVID, you probably want to record it there and then maybe you do your impact assessment there um from the um pre-work assessment monitoring, right? So this is the one where, you know, um, you classify yourself. So let's say, you know, I think I'm good to go to work. So I need to fill out one of these before I go to work every day. So I say, yeah, I'm cleared for work. I'm going into work. Perfect. It's going to ask me to do a, a self-assessment. So if I just hit save. So you can see, you know, my classification is cleared for work. Um, I can add my area facility locations. I can, you know, put in my supervisor there if I want. Um, you know, so you can look at the instructions, right? So, you know, here's what the things mean. Here's what pandemic is. You know, here's what close contact is. Here's some other notes. And then here's the uh, self-assessment. So if I just click it, you know, it's going to ask me a bunch of questions. You know, have you traveled outside of Canada? No, no, you know, no, no. Do I have a cough? Yeah, I do actually now. Do I have runny nose? Yeah, I do. Do I have a fever? No. Shrift of breath? No. Have I tested positive? No. Have I recovered? Yes, no, NA. So based on, you know, the answers, it's going to calculate a result for me. And then it will tell me, you know, what it is, you know. So now I'm exhibiting symptoms of COVID, you know, based on the selection, you should not come to the project site, merely go home, self-isolate for 14 consecutive days. Um, and then, you know, if I go back in here and, you know, answer this all, all okay, you know, clear it for, you know, secondary screening or whatever your processes are. You know, some companies are implementing um, um, on-site secondary screening. So, you know, maybe that's as simple as, you know, a medic on-site taking everyone's temperature, um, or, you know, maybe you have no secondary screening. In that case, it's just, you're clear for work, you know, go in, have fun. Um, the daily interaction log. Really simple, right? Start this um, forum at the start of your shift. And throughout the day, you know, whether this be through the portal on your mobile device, you know, anytime you interact physically with someone, uh, if they're an employee, you know, enter their details here. Um, if there's someone not an employee, i.e. not in your system, um, you know, enter their personal information here, right? Uh, and any of the uh, 
uh, parts of the facility or areas you visited, also enter them here. And this is this is a daily form, right? So you fill this out daily at the end of your shift, submit it. Um, and then again, if um, you know if you get sick, um, and I'll show you how to do this in Power BI, you can you can start to track, you know, um, who who you were exposed with, and and um, you know being able to contact those individuals. So we got the uh, daily check-in form. So let's say I'm cleared for work. <coughs> So these are these are some key fields here, right? Do you need any support today? Uh, yes, no. You know, have you communicated with uh, someone else today? Yes, no. We start to track these responses in Power BI, um, and they'll show up at the top of the list. So you know, if people are saying they need support, yes, or you know, um, if if they're not actually talking with other individuals, um, you know, through electronic means or whatever, um, this will start to flag individuals that you know maybe someone needs to reach out to them and make sure that they're okay. Also answering this question, yes, will run simple workflow that will notify, you know, either your supervisor or manager or, or someone else in the organization saying, hey, you know, this person entered a daily check and they're saying they need support. So, you know, he, here's the comments that they have, um, you know, maybe reach out to them. And then we talked really about, you know, all this kind of stuff, you know, personal workspace inspection, really simple, just, uh, you know, is your chair the right height? Good chair, good, uh, uh, you know, posture, all that kind of stuff. Uh, just gets people thinking about, you know, working properly um, from home so they don't develop, you know, any any long term injuries. And then you've got your again standard HSC processes. Um, like I said, with the safety meeting, um, you know, very standard. Other than, you know, we do start tracking some. Uh, emergency response details now um, for every safety meeting, like muster locations, uh, you know, who's the commander, who's the first aiders, because this stuff is a little more pertinent now because of the high risk of, of COVID, right? Um, instant reporting. So, you know, uh, this one's very simple. Um, a lot of you, or probably most of you already have an instant reporting process, but uh, you know, I mean, COVID really is, you know, um, either like an exposure or an, uh, an illness. So, you know, I think it falls under the uh, the injury category. Um, but, you know, you can start doing things like, you know, is this incident report or, um, specific to COVID, right? Yes. Well, then you can start popping up COVID specific stuff like, um, you know, the risk in that. So, you know, what's the type? You know, was this an exposure? Was there a suspected infection, a confirmed infection? Um, you know, was there travel in the within the 14 days? You know, um, after finding this out, or you know, have you been properly uh, decontaminating, disinfecting the uh, the area that this this person was using or, or visited, right? And if no, you know, what's your comment? So, starting to do stuff like this uh, in the instant process is is what we're thinking about. And that's about it for uh, for forms. I mean, quick action is really, you know, action control and action and support is, you know, hey, what do you need? Do you need to add someone to the system, remove them? You know, do you want a new form? Is there a change? Do you need some training? Is there a technical issue? So this is just a real easy way for, you know, the uh, the users of iTrack to communicate back to, you know, someone in the organization saying that that they're having they're having issues with the product. So. Um, I'll let Trevor take screen again and I'll talk uh, through some Power BI here and then I'll show what the thing looks like uh, in real life. So uh, here's one important um, Power BI dashboard and this comes from the um, um, the uh, pre-work assessment, right? So this is the form that someone has to fill out before they go to work. So what you can see is, you know, there's a time slicer here, right? So you can look at any of this stuff across um, a period of time. You can see who entered it. You can see uh, what their initial classification was in the form. And then you can also see, you know, how their uh, self assessment um, turned out, right? So, um, you know, you can see Melek there was saying, you know, hey, I'm, I'm good to come to work, but, you know, I'm going to need secondary screening. Yet when he answered it, he's he's got probably got COVID. Uh, yeah, actually, he said he's confirmed, so <laughs> he probably should go to work. Um, you know, others like, uh, you know, Cassim there, you know, he, he answered he's all green, so um, he was good to go. 
Um, and then it shows um, a pie chart, a breakdown of, you know, based on all these forms coming in, um, you know, obviously was this looking like across your organization, right? Uh, you can see 55% of folks are, you know, good to go to work and then, um, you know, the rest of the population there, you know, 20% presumed, 10% um, confirmed, right? 10% exposed. So, um, you know, real easy way to, to break down, you know, um, the employees coming into work, what, what's looking at and to, you know, to nip stuff um, real quick when you have to. Next one, please. Um, so this was the uh, the contact and location tracing, right? So again, I can look at um, it across date and I can pick one of the employees. So let's say Cossum ended up, you know, getting COVID. I can come to this one. I can pick his name. I can choose my time frame. I probably want to choose, you know, 14 days or maybe even long, a little, little longer just to just to be sure, right? And then what's going to do is it's going to show me the uh, forms he's entered. Um, and then it's going to then uh, show me a heat map of, you know, who he's interacted with either from an employee perspective or, uh, you know, third party perspective, or if he was actually entering um, facility or area details too, that would show up here. So you can see, you know, he interacted with uh, Melek, John and Michelle quite a bit. So, um, you know, within that period, um, right? So, you know, maybe you want to contact them first and then you can see the uh, other folks that he's he's interacted with. Um, so it's a real good way to, you know, help your organization and uh, trace down, you know, others that you need to contact and, you know, uh, let them know what uh, what's happened. And then, you know, we've got other things that just helps you, um, you know, run the with the data that's coming into this environment. So, you know, one of the things is kind of program participation, right? So either from a per person perspective or from a per process perspective is, you know, are folks filling this stuff out, um, you know, so is it going to give you value, right? Um, so you can see that, you know, of all the employees here, you know, 91% of them have um, added one of these forms. Um, and there's only one employee that, um, you know, hasn't um, done any yet, right? So that's, you know, uh, don't worry about the name. It's just a test user. But um, so again, you can start to see, you know, who's not participating in the program um, or who needs some help. So I think that was it for Power BI or maybe not. Let's yeah, that's uh, that's right, Darren. You can uh, okay. switch over to the live Power BI now. All right, let me steal your screen. <clears throat> so here's the uh, the Power BI. Um, you can see a bunch of tabs down here. Um, I'll, I'll run through these pretty quick since we're coming up against time, but um, really this one here is just um, a big grid of all your process flows, right? So this is just me saying, hey, if I want to look at, you know, all the instant reports coming in, you know, here they are. If I want to look at, you know, instant reports with me, you know, here they are, right? So it's it's just an easy way for you to, you know, kind of drill down and find your data. Um, and then once you find the data you're looking for, um, you know, obviously you can export this or, you know, just click off this and, and link right into your, your iTrack site. Um, and then, you know, here's the uh, the participation grids that we were showing, right? So here's all the um, process flows that are coming into the system, uh, the account. And then, you know, of all the employees, how many are have filled some things out and who hasn't, and then it will show those, those employees here. And then from uh, flipping that on its head, right, you can look at by employee now, right? So, you know, you can see, um, you know, carson has been an all-star and he's been, you know, adding a, a ton of these forms and doing what he needs to do. Um, you know, this John Smith is is not on the ball, right? So maybe you want to talk to some of these folks and, you know, either see why they're, they're not using the process or maybe there's something else going on. Uh, we're just throwing in our typical, you know, actions registry Power BI, right? That just helps you manage your uh, your actions coming out of iTrack, right? From, you know, which uh, process they're coming from, status, you know, their priority, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, being able to click into the, the form that they're coming from. So this is kind of our standard one, but we're throwing it in here too. Um, that's the COVID monitoring one that we showed. Um, you know, and again, you can you can click through this, right? So if I want to look at all my confirmed cases, you know, so here's the, the confirmed classification for that guy. 
um, you know, here's all the guy, all the folks saying, hey, we're good coming into work, but you know, here's how they're assessing. Um, here's a daily interaction log, right? So I can choose, you know, my employee. You know, maybe if I want to look at me, right? Here's who I've interacted with. Um, I can also filter by date and that, um, you know, and I can also do multiple selections too if, if I need to. Here's that uh, daily check-in that I was talking about in terms of, you know, um, what are what are people doing? Are they working from home? Are they self-isolating? You know, do they need support? Um, have they been talking to people? So um, you can see here too, um, you know, Kasim, he's he's answers this three times. They need support, right? Um, but he's also saying he's communicating with folks. So, you know, that's that's OK. You know, here's two people that have said they need support, but they haven't been talking with anyone. So this just gives you a list of, you know, people you probably should reach out to and make sure they're OK and see what kind of support they need. Um, and then this one here just shows you, you know, if you kind of sort it, um, who's all participating in this, right? So if I've got um, six employees, right, I can see my six employees are filling this out, but, you know, um, John Doe's only when he fill, filled this out once, he's he's not filling it out, you know, every day like he's supposed to. So, and then the form details here, right? So as I, you know, click off on these things, it, you know, filters filters down here. Um, and then real quick, you know, you got your travel request forms coming in, so you can just kind of stay on top of that. And the same thing with your alternate work location forms. Um, and then. These are um, some work in progresses too. So this is, you know, right now just a quick list of your instance coming in. Um, we want to build out something a little more specific to uh, to COVID. So over the next few days, we'll we'll be working on that for um, for the instant, and then also same thing with the inspections. This is just a work in progress, but <laughs> you know we want to produce a, a Power BI dashboard that you know doesn't matter any inspection you can you can pull up and you can start to see, you know how these things are scored, right? Um, you know, are you passing? Are you failing? Um, you know, what um, what do you have to start drilling into in terms of these inspections, whether it be, you know, your cleaning checklist or maybe it's your business continuity plan. Um, this is where you'll start to drive into that. So there'll be uh, from the instant perspective and the inspections perspective in the next few days, you'll you'll see a lot of uh, uh, additional stuff coming out for that. And I think that's all I had. Well, Darren, that's 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 quite a bit. So uh, <laughs> I think we covered a lot of territory uh, uh, quite uh, quite quickly here. Uh, it's been uh, a lot of late nights and and stuff. So first thing is I want to thank uh, you know my whole team for really uh, reacting um, you know quickly to this. Um, but I'd love to get some feedback. Um, I, I know it's sometimes a little hard on these kind of calls, but I just got a couple questions here. If anybody wants to type anything in the window, we're also going to follow up with a, a little survey piece. And, um, you know, obviously we're, we're happy to talk uh, um, anytime with, uh, with our consulting group or as a whole um, to get together, get some feedback. But does anybody have any immediate questions that they want to ask or things like that that um, maybe we could address right here live? Hi Trevor, it's Paula. Hi Paula, how are you? I'm good, thanks. I hope you guys are all well. Hey, just wanted to say this is um, fantastic um, and great work on this. I just a couple of questions. Is any of the information within the forms adaptable to like our local government um, requirements? Darren, do you want to take a chime in here? Um, you know, but I, I guess I would say. To, to date, at, at this point, no, it wouldn't be. Uh, that would be some of the things that you'd need to adapt in your, you know, specific implementation. You could certainly take these forms and, you know, kind of a, a, a accommodate, but from a, a New Zealand perspective, um, those kind of processes aren't going to be there today, but you can certainly add them in. Great. Yeah, some of the stuff we've uh, pulled, Paul, also comes from, um, um, like the World Health Organization too, right? So it depends on um, where we got the information from um, to help us build these forms. So if it's a WHO stuff, it might be okay. Um, the other thing too is, you know, when we looked across jurisdictions, um, again, we kind of focused on, 
you know, where we live, our jurisdiction, but, um, you know, it's very similar, right? Um, you know, between jurisdictions, so. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's great. I mean, it, it, I guess uh, we're, like New Zealand's at a level four lockdown, if there was any specific instructions to our employees regarding that, if we we're able to add them in, if you're saying, Trevor, that we can um, do that sort of um, at locally, um, yeah, take, absolutely. Take like, locally. Yeah. You know, our intent with these forms is to to get people started and and to accelerate the the process. And and obviously across the world, everybody's experiencing the same thing at the same, um, you know, the same time. You know, you know. Uh, and what we're trying to do is just give you guys a starting point. But if you want to add new section controls, you have different classifications. You know your your company and your employees might interact with this or or share different kinds of information. This is just a starting point. It's meant to be a template for you to get going. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. You're most welcome. Okay. Well, unless there's any other questions, we'll follow up with everybody. Um, you know, I see quite a few different companies on here, so we'll we'll follow up with you guys all with an email. We'd love to have um, some feedback for you if you see some things that are missing or as you get, uh, you know, looking at this, um, you know, obviously as you get into the details, you may find other things. But, um, you know, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, again, a, a shout out to my team for the, the, the long hours and the heavy duty work over the last little while, but, uh, you know, I think it just goes to show the power in the iTrack platform, what you can do quickly, um, how you can use the, you know, the mobile environment, use the portal environment, and uh, ultimately, you know, uh, you know, help keep our employees and our staff uh, safe. Um, I will also say that, you know, there's further things that we're looking at. Um, we're in conversations with Microsoft about some, some broader applicability of some of the process that we have here and with some of our other key stakeholders. So, um, we may call on you to, to support some of those initiatives that we're in discussions about because, uh, you know, the fact that this can be really active, this can be reported on quickly, and it can be tailored to an individual company and even available on a, on a more public basis. There's there's lots of kind of generic forms you can download, but this can be a very active um, kind of, you know, database driven solution that, that allows people to make uh, decisions really proactively. So with that, I think we'll, we'll close for today. Um, uh, thanks so much and uh, really appreciate everyone attending today. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>